This is lesson four of unit six. In this unit, um, we've been talking about how to draw what are called Lewis structures. And now we're going to uh, do a few more uh, Lewis structures of a, a strange type of substance called a polyatomic ion. Now, polyatomic ions are actually very common in chemistry. You can actually find a bunch of these in your house, in the chemicals in your house. And polyatomic ions are a charged group of covalently bonded atoms. Now, charged is what refers to the ion. Remember, ions have a charge, either positive charge or negative charge. And uh, covalently bonded means they are sharing electrons. And all the Lewis structures that we've been drawing have shown molecules share electrons. So we've seen, for example, the sharing of electrons between carbon and fluorine. These lines represent sharing electrons. So we've been looking at covalent compounds. And so we're going to look at a few more here. Uh, covalent compounds that have a charge. This is almost um, like mixing ionic and covalent compounds. These covalent compounds will form a charge. By the way, the word polyatomic has in it the definition. Poly means many. Atomic means polyatomic, many atoms. And ion means it has a charge. So notice here, you have many atoms. You have a phosphorus and four oxygens, five atoms, and they have a charge. Notice here you have five atoms, and they have a charge. Notice here you have more than five. You have seven atoms, and they have a charge. So we'll show you how to draw these, uh, the structures of these polyatomic ions. Here are a few of them for you for your, your visual pleasure. And what will happen is, uh, in order to draw them, if the polyatomic ion is negative, we'll have to add electrons. Because since it's negative, as in the case here, that means it's gained three electrons. So we'll have to add electrons to our total. If it's positive, we'd have to remove electrons, as is the case here from our total. Then we'll put brackets around the whole thing and put the charge in the upper right-hand corner to show that it does have a charge. So let's get to it. This will be a shorter lesson. Here it says draw the Lewis structure of the following two polyatomic ions. So we'll use the same exact method as before. First, we would like to total the number of valence electrons that the elements bring. Nitrogen brings five valence electrons. If you take a look from the periodic table, each hydrogen brings one. We have four of them. In fact, let's do this. Let's multiply one by four, since we have four valence electrons. This gives us a total of correct? Nine. And then, since it has a positive charge, we will have to subtract one electron. This is important. We'll subtract one to get us eight valence electrons. We subtract one because electrons have been removed. That's why it is a positive charge. So we have a total of eight valence electrons to deal with here. Let's decide who goes in the middle. Now, hydrogen can never go in the middle, so nitrogen will have to be in the middle. The four hydrogens then will go all the way around the nitrogen. The next step is connect everything with a bond. And that gives us one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We've exhausted all our electrons, available electrons. So we're actually finished. This is the complete Lewis structure because remember hydrogen can only have two valence electrons. And if you count, there they are, two. This one has two, this has two, this has two. All is good. Nitrogen, if you count, has eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The last thing to do is to put brackets around the whole thing and put the charge in the upper right hand corner, which in this case is plus. You can put plus one if you like, or you can just put plus. And that is the lowest structure for NH4 plus. Let's also do CO3 two minus. Let's do this substance. Let's go ahead and do it in red. Let's do the same con concept. Carbon brings four. Each oxygen brings six. There are three oxygens, so we'll just multiply six by three. And then since we have two more electrons, we're going to have to add two. Because the minus two charge means we have two extra electrons. This gives us 18 plus two, which is 20 plus four. We get a total of 24 electrons available for bonding. Let's arrange the elements around each other. Carbon goes in the middle. The three oxygens then must go on the outside. The reason carbon goes in the middle is because it is the less electronegative one. Now, the other reason is the formula will actually give you a clue. The one you have one of will usually, almost always, go in the middle. Not always, but almost always. And then we connect 
everything by a bond. This gives us one, two, three, four, five, six. We have a total of 24. Let's begin putting them around the outside. This is actually a crucial step. Don't begin putting them around the inside, but around the outside. That way, if the middle atom does not have enough, we can let the outer atoms share. So 24, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 so far. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Now, we've exhausted all our electrons. But if you take a look, the carbon in the middle only has six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So the way we'll do this, we'll ask one of the oxygens to share its electrons. It does not matter which one. So why don't we ask this oxygen to pull his electrons in. This again will allow carbon to have access to oxygen's electrons, but oxygen will not lose them. So you'll have to make sure you erase these right, once you do that. And usually to clean it up, you would literally erase them. So grab your eraser, take care of those. And this gets us the correct structure for the CO32 minus. If you analyze this oxygen on the left side, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That follows the octet rule. This oxygen on the right side, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That follows the octet rule. The oxygen below looks the same as the one here, so that's eight. The carbon, if you analyze it, has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Everyone follows the octet rule. Everyone is happy like a noble gas. We are ready to party. So don't forget to put the brackets around the whole compound along with the charge, which is not minus two in this case. So this lesson allowed us to see a few more Lewis structures with a little bit of a twist with this idea of having a charge. So practice a few of these. I've got two of them for you to practice. Here they are. Try to draw the structures of H3O plus and NO3 minus. And this will complete for us lesson four of unit six.